Hi everybody, it's Virginia and we are in uh, video four. Um, I have, and um, this is uh, the healing journey of art. And if you've been following this, this uh, it's about, it's, it's coming from a book that I have not finished, but I've actually written five chapters and there's only supposed to be eight, I believe. It's not a very long book. It's gonna be like a workbook. And it's um, my healing journey of art uh, what I, that I share with other people and when I get to do small groups and such. Um, but God nudged me a number of three years ago to write this book, write this workbook. And um, so I've been, what I do is I work on it, work on it, and then I stick it away, and then I work on it, and then I, you know, that back and forth. But I'm pretty close to uh, knowing that I'm trusting that I'm going to be able to finish it and get it out there. But you guys are getting sneak preview on um, on videos. And so um, work at your own pace because this is about freedom. It's about learning how to be free and <sighs> releasing yourself from that those traps of, of comparison, of need for approval, of perfectionism, having to do everything right. In, and because it's impossible, right? So um, we read um, um, we read Isaiah. Um, no, it's actually found in Isaiah too. But we read in Luke uh, uh, last week, Luke four seventeen and eighteen about Jesus. Uh, he was in uh, with uh, he was in the tabernacle. And he unrolled the scroll, the written words of Isaiah. And he was fulfilling, he, Isaiah, hundreds of years before Jesus was actually prophesying, speaking about the, the Messiah to come. And Jesus says, basically, I'm here. Um, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. That could be the physically poor, the poor in spirit. Um, he has sent me to proclaim deliverance to the captives. He has sent me to give recovery of sight to the blind and to release those who are oppressed. Um, so I said in the last video, uh, that was like, check, 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 check. That was me. <laughs> and uh, so um, this video is uh, going to be about we're going we're gonna to kind of touch on a subject that's been very difficult for a lot of people. And what it does is it separates us from knowing God as a loving Father. Because we have an earthly image of our dad, our earthly dad or stepdad or, or even a, you know, your mom if you were single, if she was a single parent. And for those of you who didn't have, who had less than nurturing um, upbringings, um, this is going to be for you. Um, those that don't know how loved you are by God the Father. Okay, so um, we're going to get quiet right now like we do. And we're going to just spend a little, that was my cat. We're going to spend a little time right now. We're going to ask Jesus to come right now and be um, just with us right now. So, something just crossed my mind and that's what I'm going to go with because this is all about following the Holy Spirit. That was a seagull. I live by the beach. If you heard that, I don't know. Um, I just pictured as we close our eyes and we get quiet and we take those deep breaths and we start letting Jesus unpack our backpack. <laughs> and we got it so full. This is the month of April 2020. And we're in the middle of that coronavirus. I don't know where you live. I live in California. In the middle of the, in the center of the state along the coast. A lot of us have got a backpack that's really full with stress and anxiety and future tripping and worry and burden 
nights and oh god sleepless nights so let jesus right now keep your eyes closed just picture him use your sanctified imagination let him lift off that backpack not just unpack it but it's so heavy and it hurts your back he says child let me take it and you just kind of wiggle out of it and he lifts it off and he says I've got this I have it not meant for you to carry it's meant for me to carry doesn't that feel good kids I call you kids because we're all just kids we're God's kids and it feel good to give your burdens, even though, even though you're all grown up and so many of you are really, really responsible and you carry a lot. You're not meant to carry it. Ultimately, you have to keep giving it to God. Keep giving it over. So as I said before, if you want to stay in that place of quiet meditation, just pause this video. Now Jesus, I just ask that you would release us from the bondage of self today. Would you show us what that feels like? Released from the bondage of ourselves and God, would you show us what a really wonderful father looks like today? Be with each of my friends on this video. Each one watching. Let them experience you in a whole new light. Not harmful, not critical, not religious, not filled with terrible hard to reach rules and regulations that burdened them and, and, and destroyed their creativity, destroyed them and hurt them. Today, Lord, would you show them how much you care, that you will always be with them, that you will never leave them, that you want to heal them. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, as I said before, if you want to pause and stay right there with Jesus, you go right ahead. And then when you're ready to come back, you come back. I'm still working on my mountain painting that I started. So, um, and today we're going to talk about knowing God as Father. Okay, pretty big subject. But trust me, it'll be okay. I think that's right there. How's that? <laughs> my movie my movie set up here. <laughs> Studio, right? <laughs> um so as I said before, um I um recovered alcoholic and I did my fair share of drugs too back in the day. Um, I'm a super grateful person today because um, I had multiple bottoms, as they say. I had hit the end of my rope many, many times as a young woman. Um, I became alcoholic. I was alcoholic from the beginning. I never was a social drinker. Um, I, I just drank to get drunk immediately. Right? Some of you are have experienced that in your drug addictions. Um, um, workaholic. I, I, I'm that too. I, 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 that was a big one for me. I didn't even realize it was. Um, but God has really helped me with that too. Um, so in my book, this is a, um, going to be about knowing God as father because that was huge for me. And, um, to me, God was, he was, the only daddy I knew, now I ended well with my dad. I, I want to say this. My relationship with my dad, my earthly dad, was so beautifully restored. And 
Um, I have, I have no regrets. And if I could, you know, muster up one, it's that it wasn't restored quicker. Um, but I didn't realize how much I had held against my, my dad. My daddy had a lot of issues and for the sake of honoring my dad, I'm not going to go into it, but anything that could go wrong with a dad and his little girl did. And um, I hated my father for years and years and years. As I grew up and got out of the house, I absolutely hated him. I didn't know he was broken. I just thought he was terrible. Um, I didn't know, you know. And um, so in my journey of recovery that talks about forgiveness and uh, making uh, amends, going back and cleaning up your, your past. And if you owe people amends, uh, clean up your side of the street, you gotta do that. Well, I, uh, I worked on forgiveness for 18 years with my dad. <laughs> and actually, I thought I had hit that plateau of forgiveness many times, but um, I hadn't. And, um, and here's why I knew I hadn't, even though there was times in recovery where I thought, yeah, I've forgiven my dad. I hadn't seen him in 30 years, but yeah, I forgive my dad. <laughs> it was 30 years before I saw my dad again. But over those years, I mean, he was in California, I was in Florida and we would talk on the phone and there was times that we didn't talk on the phone. And, um, but I thought I had forgiven him because I had done steps, I had done counseling, I had done all this stuff and. And, uh, and then something would happen maybe a year or so later after I thought I had forgiven my dad and, and it resurrected unforgiveness in my life, my heart. I was like, well, I thought I had already dealt with that. Well, I hadn't, unfortunately. I only thought I had. I'm going to reach over here and grab some green or some dark green. Help me, Jesus. Um, there it is. So... I would work again. I would go back into, you know, the steps, the 12 steps that I'm a, such a believer in. And because to me, the 12 steps are the Bible, uh, they're, they're the Bible for dummies. No, that's not true. <laughs> they're, they're not that. They're, they're Bible put made in layman's terms. I could say that they're, they're all from scripture and, uh, originally, and the concept is definitely Jesus. And, um, so I would work, work, work on, you know, writing, writing letters and working on fourth step, fifth step and, and, uh, forgiving my dad. Right? And then I'd find relief thinking, well, that's done. Got that done. Right. And then something would happen and resurrect it again over the years. I'm like, what is going on? So I became a Christian in the early 90s. Um, wonderful experience. I haven't shared that with you guys yet on these teaching videos, but I will. Not today. Um, but it was a time in my walk, or as a Christian, I was a very religious Christian for a long time. <laughs> Some of you know what I mean. And that just means, you know, it's like, knowing God is God. I didn't understand God as a loving father, even though I was born again. I didn't know that. I didn't have that relationship with God. I, I didn't realize that my relationship with my earthly dad, who was critical, who was abusive, I didn't, and who was judgmental and all that, I didn't know that it had like colored my concept of God the Father. But it really does. And that is like, that's straight across the board in psychology and with your doctors. They know pretty much, they know that your relationship with your earthly father or that parent or that reflects on your concept of God until that is healed up. So um, I just want to encourage you with that. Um, so 
I uh, was, I'll give you a little rundown. Maybe you can draw from it. I hope you can. I was a very much of a believer. Uh, I gave my life to Jesus in the early 90s. It was an amazing time in my life. Just crazy beautiful time. And, um, and uh, but I didn't know God as Father. And I, and I just didn't even know that I was supposed to. Or there was such a thing. Um, I, you know, it, I didn't get it. And, um, well, how do I make a long story short, but still keep it on point? So I, um, I, I'm very, I, I was a Baptist for 13 years. And then I am pursued by God even more. Um, because I was pretty prideful. I was very prideful. I was a prideful Christian. There's nothing worse, I think. Um, and um, I didn't know that I didn't know. <laughs> you know, you don't know what you don't know. But I moved. I'd gotten divorced, sadly. It was very tragic. And... Um, We'll go into that another time, too, um, without putting down my ex-husband, help me, Jesus. But <laughs> so I divorced. I moved to another town and, and in this other town. Now, I was in church every Sunday. I loved Sunday school, adult Sunday school, loved it. Just really loved it and loved being a Southern Baptist, man, because like uh, there was no other thing. We were Southern Baptists, and if you weren't, you were wrong. <laughs> just, I'm just saying. <laughs> you know? was, that's where I was anyway. <laughs> Pretty bad. And um, But I moved to this other town, and I go to this church that is listed as a Southern Baptist church. Well, it, it wasn't. And to this day, I know it was a... Now, nothing wrong with Southern Baptist, but God had another path for me. And to this day, I think it was just a setup by God. He set me up. How, do you, how many of you know that God will do that when he, when he has to? He's pursuing you for more, and he knows what he, you need. And, and he's going to come after you. And um, he does it in a very loving way. So I go to this church, and I go to their adult Sunday school class. I'm trying to find a new church to fit into, right? And um, and they start talking about stuff that I mean, oh, <laughs> I never heard what they were talking about. They were talking about dreams and visions and prophecy, and I had never heard that. I had never heard anything like they were talking about in adult Sunday school class in my big old Southern Baptist church. I never heard of such a thing that they were talking about an interpretation of dreams and how God will speak to you and like what are they talking about but I sat there and and at the end of that first class the teacher came up to me and and I we had already made introductions before but he's he said um are you baptizing the Holy Spirit I uh, might see my teaching was that if you are born again you have the Holy Spirit and that's true but it's different than the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Not, but I didn't know. So I said, well, yeah, I'm born again, if that's what you mean. He says, no, that's not what I mean. Now, some of you, I hope you'll stay the course with me. Because what I'm about to say right now, I hope that you don't get, I hope you just don't close off in your mind. Because if you do, you know, man, you're going to miss out on some cool stuff. And if you do, then maybe maybe that's what you're supposed to do. I, I don't know, but I hope you hope you stay with me at what I'm about to say. He said, teacher said, no, it's not what I mean. Are you baptized in the Holy Spirit? Do you speak in tongues? And I was so offended. Oh my gosh, it's like, no, I, what are you talking about? That's not for everybody. I was see, very ignorant. And um, I didn't know how ignorant I was. <laughs> I just didn't know. I don't mean ignorant in a bad way. I, I mean, I just, I was just, when you're ignorant, you don't know. And, um, 
and he said, well, he said, I'm just going to give you some scriptures to think about it. He gave me some scriptures. I brought them home. I had no idea what, what he was talking about. They were in different books. Uh, probably the book of Acts, probably uh, Corinthians. It's like, yeah, it didn't get it. And I loved Jesus. Man, I was born again, but I, my, I was closed off to that. I didn't know God is Father, and that's where I'm going to go with this. Make a really long story short, it wasn't that long after that, that I, my spirit became very willing. If there was more of God, I wanted it. All right? And um, I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. Changed my life. Talk about changing my life. Um, I, I was already on fire for things of God. Um, and um, this just like poured gasoline on my fire. With a stick of dynamite. <laughs> it was like crazy what happened to me. It was so wonderful. And um, I'm not going to go there with you guys right now. But I just want to encourage you to pursue more with God. Wherever you are with God. Um, pursue more. No matter where you are with God. Um, and um, so. But I still didn't know God as Father. And I didn't know that I didn't know. Right, but shortly after that, I finally found a little church that I really loved, and I had this new prayer language called tongues. And I'm, I mean, when that happened, when the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the evidence was the speaking in tongues. And some of you will argue that with me, and that's okay. We all have our different takes on Scripture on that. But here's what I want to say: when I got baptized with the Holy Spirit. That other baptism, besides water baptism, is spoke about in the Bible, and that we you it, you can't debate that. I mean, you could, I guess you could, but it's pretty clear. So there's this other baptism, and I it's called fire, and it's like crazy and wonderful, and um, so I start experiencing these gifts of the Holy Spirit, gifts of healing. I could lay hands on the sick, and they would be healed. I had dreams and interpretation. I had interpretation of tongues. I um, just, it was a magnificent time, but I didn't know God as Father. It was amazing. And God wanted me to know Him as Father. He wanted me to know Him. And even at that point in time, I still had not seen my dad. And at that point, it would probably be about 20, between 28 years or 30 years, I hadn't seen him at that point. But talking to him on the phone and 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 I uh, thought I was all good with the forgiveness stuff and and um but my new pastors told me about this church in Toronto, Canada. Now I was living in Florida at the time. And they said to me, the pastor said, if you really because I love the church, I love the pastor and his wife, wonderful people that taught me so much, loving people. And if you really want to know God, the if you want to know our vision for the church, they said, our heart for the church, if you really want to know that, you got to, uh, Toronto, Canada, there's a conference coming up, and we want you to come. I was like, wow. Well, I had just sold a house in Florida in my divorce, and I had money, and I had a little time, and I signed up to go to Toronto, Canada, to this church. At the time, it was called Toronto Airport Christian Fellowship. Doesn't sound really like, you know, Tabernacle of Jesus or something like that. It was called Toronto Airport Christian Fellowship. And um, I go online while waiting for my time to pass. I signed up. I don't, it was in January, remember that. So it could have been in November or so that I signed up for the conference. It was about soaking prayer. I had no idea what that was either. I had a little teaching on it in my church, but Anyway, so their whole their whole deal in Toronto, they were in what we call revival, and um, I had never experienced that thus far. And there was a what they call an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in one designated area. And they, over the years, had millions upon millions of people that had come and gotten touched by God and got out of a religious mindset and got to know God as Father. Now, man, that was foreign to me. I'm going to tell you, 
I still had, I still had ought against my natural father. I, I didn't realize that I did, but I did. And, um, so I go, I'm a skeptic. I'm going to go to Toronto. Pastor and his wife are going. We're on the same plane. I go on the internet to find out what they're talking about because I, you know, I'm still in control of things, don't you know? And, um, and uh, they're still working on that part. And, um, and so I look on the internet and here's these, I see this one part where these, it's, a, it's like these recorded videos of what's happening up there. And, and I, there was these old people, one of them, I remember distinctly, there was probably 10 older people. To me, they all looked old. I don't know, maybe they weren't. There was a mixture of old people, younger people. But they were sitting on the floor like kindergarten kids. And they were laughing. And they were holding hands, like in a circle. And you know what? My religiousness inside was offended at that. I saw them, and I thought, that is so weird. It just made me upset that these old people were laughing like that. I had not experienced that. I, but it, it really bothered me. <laughs> I don't know why, but it just like grated on my nerves. I'm like, ew, that's so weird. But I was already speaking in tongues, so I was not a Southern Baptist anymore. And I and uh, my, this new pastor and his wife wanted me to go up there. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go. So I really go as a skeptic, kids. I have to tell you, I go as a as a skeptic, and um, and um, I go as a skeptic, and I walk. Uh, it's in January now. I've been living in Florida at that point for many years, and and um, and uh, I, I go as a skeptic, and waiting outside in Toronto, Canada, in January from Florida. I think I'm going to die. Number one, can't breathe hardly. But I'm going to go and stay the course. And there were thousands of people in line to get in the church. And that was 19, that was no, 2006. That was 2006. And, um, and um, so 2006, I'm waiting there to go in. And I'm skeptic, I'm going to tell you, but I'm a between a rock and a hard place because I'm a Southern Baptist that's now speaking in tongues and nothing's fitting anymore. And, um, so I walk into this beautiful big lobby and this is going to sound weird to some of you. Some of you'll know exactly what I'm talking about, but just go with it. <laughs> Something kind of in this, I don't know. I can't explain it, but I walk in with us herd of people, but I fall on the ground and nobody pushes me down. But I, I, I can't stand up. There's a presence of God it was so lovely. It was so beautiful. I lose, I lose the strength in my legs and I'm on the floor. And people are just walking over me. And I can't get up. And I know it's God. My spirit knew it was God. And it was like, wait a minute. I, all I wanted to do was get a good seat. <laughs> and I couldn't get up. That was my first experience in Toronto, Canada. At, at the Toronto Airport Christian Fellowship, which is now called Catch the Fire. And um, so, I mean, I'm like undone. I'm there for a week and I get undone. God is so beautiful and Jesus meeting me there, right? I have, in, I have supernatural encounters with Jesus. Um, just beautiful time. I was one time he, I was like dancing with Jesus in, I mean, he was just so real to me and, and he was there, his spirit so strong and people all over the place were getting set free from trauma, from, from sickness and disease. It was incredible healings. I got healed on my neck after 18 years of damage and pain and that pain still never come back. I, I got healed instantly there. The greatest gift that I got there was from Jesus. And it was a Saturday. I think we were ending on a Sunday and flying back. And there was thousands of us there that night. And we all had experienced Jesus in so many ways. And it was so... And I, la I had holy laughter, is called. And then I had holy crying. <laughs> Don't you know that in the laughter I got... 
I got a lot of healing. It was powerful. I still get healing with that laughter. Um, I love it. And uh, some of you don't know what I'm talking about. Others do. But I just encourage you to go with it and find out about it. And Because um, if you come away from a, an experience where you love God more, and you know God as a loving father, and you get set free, that's not the devil. A lot of people have some negative stuff to say about Toronto, Canada, that it, what happened there for those years. But if you come away from a place and you love God more, and, he, and you know he loves you, and he heals you, and he sets you free, that's not the devil. There was thousands upon thousands of ministries that started after that because of that, because of people going there and getting set free and going into the world and start. Heidi Baker got set free there and and has an incredible, her and her husband and their teams have incredible ministries all over the world now. They're based in Mozambique. Um, it just goes on and on and on and on. There was people that got set free there. And so uh, I was one of them. And um, on a Saturday night, um, Still had an experience. Well, still, still, I didn't know. I didn't know I didn't know God. Is, <laughs> I didn't know that, you know, I, I had, didn't, I just didn't know yet. But I mean, I had already experienced more than I had ever experienced in all the previous years in just a week. And um, so Saturday night, they're going to lay hands. The pastor, Carol and John are not going to lay hands on us. Thousands of us. So we line up around the uh, this big giant room, and they have their team, and they're coming around, and they just touch you, just a quick touch, and they go by, T touch, 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 touch. They both. I was just like crazy. It's like well, and I'm like I count myself in this circle. I'm thinking I'm probably number fifteen hundred and sixty, <laughs> and they're gonna run out of juice because I always made it all about me anyway. Sad. <laughs> deliver me Jesus and um, so anyway I figured they're going to run out of juice by the time they get to me but guess what it wasn't about what it was about what Jesus had for me I didn't know what Jesus had for me I had no idea what I was going to experience so they come running by there's thousands of us so they have to keep moving and I again I have that place where I can't stand up and I and there's people behind me, and they help me down as I can't stand up and under this wonderful presence of God. And I lay there, and then suddenly I find myself weeping from an inner place so deep. And it was like I, I was there, but I wasn't there, and, and I felt the presence of Jesus. When you feel the presence of Jesus, he's so kind and so loving, um, you know that it's him because we're spirit people we're spirit beings i should say and he is spirit so he touches our spirit spirit to spirit so we know we know spiritually and um so um i start weeping from a place so deep within me and i i can't i can't stop but I don't want to because I know it's him. And he's so gentle. He showed me that it was him. I saw him. I saw Jesus. I, I, mean, I know it sounds weird, but I saw Jesus. And he was with me when I was four years old. And I knew he was healing me. And I just laid there and I wept. And it came from a part in my soul, deep within my soul, that the 12 steps had not touched, even though Jesus had used the 12 steps in my life over the years and the counseling but he went so much deeper all those things were in preparation for what he wanted to do and um, so about an hour I'm there I, I think I don't know I still think it was an hour could have been three hours I don't know and um but when the Spirit of God, who was actually just bringing things from the Father to me, and bringing things from Jesus to me, when that time lifted, I sat up. And for the first time in my life, I sat up 
after years of working at forgiveness for my earthly dad, I sat up like I sat up in a, I don't, I can't explain it, but it was as if I sat up in a tangible cloud called forgiveness. It's like I sat up into it. And for the first time in my life, I had complete, absolutely incredible, supernatural, fabulous love for my earthly dad. I had unconditional love for my dad and I had unconditional forgiveness all wrapped into one. And instantly, in my heart, my dad became my daddy. And I couldn't wait to see him. And I hadn't seen him at that point in almost 30 years. And I get back to Florida. I call my dad. I want to come and see you. I come and see him. We have an incredible reunion, and um, my dad and I got set free, man. My daddy experienced uh, the love of the father through me, and years later, I actually moved out to help my dad in, when he was in his 90s, a very independent man, and his wife, too. I got to be with them for several years before my daddy passed, and I got to tell you, my dad, when he was in the emergency room one time, and he said, I, I just want to thank you for, for coming out here when I moved to California to help my dad. And, and he said, because I never would have known God the way I know God. And uh, made everything in my whole life just incredibly worth it. And so... A lot of you need to be healed, I'm just going to say. A lot of you still struggle with the concept of God as a good father. But I want to tell you that he wants to set you free from that. Remember the scripture? <laughs> I came to set the captives free. So he wants to. He, 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 he has to. He has a plan for your life. And if he doesn't get you just set free from some of these issues that have kept you so bound, you won't be able to really complete what he has for you. And um, so I'm going to lead you in a prayer right now. You set down your paints. I'm trusting your painting with me. And um, I'm going to lead you right now. He's not... He only going to give you what you can handle. I promise that. I promise you. But he wants to be revealed to your heart as a good father. Because that's who he is. He wants to teach you things that never got taught to you. He wants to show you things that never got shown to you. So close your eyes. Father, I want you to reveal to my friends right now your love. I want you to go deep in their heart right now. I trust you to do this for them. I want you to heal them like you healed me. I want you to set the captives free. I want you to give them spiritual eyes. I want you to touch their hearts. Whether their dad or their parent, mother, or that stepdad, whatever he was to them, whatever he represented, God reveal the true father, the ultimate daddy, which you are. That you would never harm them. That you're going to take their brokenness. You're going to make something beautiful. 
You're going to help others with what hurt them. But you're going to set them free. So uh, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this video. There's a wonderful book about the father's heart or the father's embrace by Jack Frost. It's called The Father's Embrace by Jack Frost. I want you to get it. It's not a huge book or anything. The Father's Embrace by Jack Frost. It's it'll 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 help set you free. I want you to stay in this place as long as you can. I want you to come back to this place as much as you can with just resting and trusting God as Father. I want you to look up scripture about how Jesus talked to the Father and see that intimate relationship. God wants you to have that relationship with him. He wants you to be set free. He wants you to receive the love that he has for you. He, he desires that greatly. So I'm going to end right now in prayer. And then next time will be video five. Father, in Jesus' name, for my friends who are being touched by you and will be touched by you, I pray, Father, in this journey that they will continue to know that you love them, that they'll grow in the love, that they're going to grow in knowledge of your love, that they're going to grow in knowledge of how much you love them and that you want to be their Abba, Papa, Father, and that you are good, that you don't set them up for failure, that you have, don't, you're not critical, you are not judgmental, you're not abusive, and you are not going to abandon them. Father, everything the devil meant for harm against my friends who are listening, turn it to the good, that they would know you intimately and they would trust you with everything they have. I pray that in Jesus' name. I'll see you next time, guys, for video five for the journey, uh, healing art journey, okay? Journey of healing art. Love you. He loves you.